Hi, I'm Lou Niani. I'm a history and politics student from Exeter University. And I really enjoyed this project because it allowed me to look at part of my daily life in Venice in a different perspective through a historical lens. And it allowed me to form a stronger connection to the city and to the public spaces which it holds. Personally, I think that it was a valuable experience in teaching us how to present research in a non-academic way, which is something that can be quite challenging to do when we've been used to doing the exact opposite. The app framework challenged us to articulate academic research into a more creative format, which is more accessible for the public. The most exciting aspect was the ability to test our research on location and later share this with friends via a QR code. At the University of Exeter, we've been using location-based technologies, smartphone apps, to do group work with our students in art, history and visual culture. We're using the same software that drives the Hidden Cities apps that I made as part of a research project on urban public space. We work with the students to create place-based interpretation in the form of geolocated city guides. It's a creative project in that students work together to identify historical characters and plausible itineraries. For instance, in Venice, they selected a 17th century apprentice in a boatyard, Sebastiano. The trail linked together the traghetti that still act as mobile bridges across the Grand Canal. A boatyard, a church with associations to plague survival, his namesake, and a bridge where ritual battles took place between rival workers' factions. In Florence, they've explored topics as varied as a day in the life of Michelangelo to how Florence is represented in film, or the shaping of the public realm through graffiti and informal forms of writing. We asked the students to take their topics and turn them into uh, trails with six to eight sides. And one of the ways we asked them to do this is by creating a guide character, a kind of uh, first-person interpretation. And what this means is they have to think carefully about place, what places matter to that person, sometimes a historical figure, who mattered to them, what kinds of issues they have to negotiate as part of their everyday lives, how issues such as gender, class and ethnicity condition their experience and also their urban coordinates. They also have to add their own commentary to this and think about what objects, images of objects, they would add to that story and show on the screen to the user of the app. So as a research exercise, it's very creative, it's challenging, but the students have always found it enormously satisfying as well. While we're using technology to make these apps, and the students enjoy learning how to use the tech and see their work appear seamlessly and professionally on their phones, the focus is not on the software, but on honing their skills in interpretation. What does it mean to examine a thing on a site? How does mobility and connectivity shape how we talk about objects? How do we communicate with different audiences? These and other questions all take research out of the lecture hall and into dialogue with the city, museums and heritage sites. And this develops skills that will be useful after they graduate. We've developed a license model so that other lecturers might adopt this approach in their teaching practice.